Uh, one thing I don't think a lot of people know is that whenever I give the cube to someone else to scramble, they often, you know, say oh, they'll scramble it really hard and they spend, you know, two or three minutes messing it up. Um, whereas, in fact, it doesn't matter if you scramble it for, you know, half a minute, five minutes, one hour. Um, no matter how mixed up a Rubik's Cube is, it is always 20 moves or less away from actually being solved. So, no matter what configuration the Rubik's Cube is in, um, it will take either 20 moves or less to be solved. It definitely is better to start speed cubing when you're, when you're younger and earlier on, um, just because you'll have a lot more time to practice. Um, whereas, if you, if you want to get competitive and you, you're a little bit older, you may not have as much time to practice and learn, learn new things. So, yeah, definitely better to start if you're younger. It's better to uh, try and figure things out on your own first before consulting a tutorial. So if you're starting out solving the Rubik's Cube, um, maybe try and solve the first layer by yourself. And if you get stuck, then go to the tutorial, um, just because it's, it's more fun and more rewarding to actually figure things out yourself. And I know when I started, I just went straight to, to the tutorial and maybe I would have been better served just trying to figure it out by myself at the start. So one, one thing is when you're starting out, um, a lot of tutorials would say, you know, always do the white side first or always do the green side first. Um, but one, one helpful thing is uh, when, when you get a scrambled roof, you, there'll be actually some sides which are easier to start on than others. So for example, if you have a scrambled cube and you want to solve the, the white side first, but actually the red side is a lot easier to solve. Um, you're better off solving on the red side as opposed to just restricting yourself to, to the white side. So this is called colour neutrality and basically the ability to start your solve for any of the six sides, not just one side. Because it gives you quite more opportunities for easier solves. So with one-handed solves, uh, a lot of people would actually tend to use their left hand for the one-handed solves just because uh, it's because of sort of how you hold it. If you're right-handed, if you're holding the cube, your left hand sort of is used to grip the cube and then your right hand does a lot of the turning. Whereas if you're doing one-handed, if you're using your left hand, the grip stays the same, but you're just doing your turning with a couple of your fingers. The main thing with the Rubik's Cube is learning and, and practicing. No one picks up a Rubik's Cube and can solve it in you know, 10 seconds or less overnight. It takes a lot of time and practice and effort to, to solve it really quickly. So I think for the most part, anyone who's fast at speed can just put a lot of, a lot of practice into what they do.